And last night, Beyonce brought some megawatt star power in her hometown of Houston, where hair is focused on reproductive rights. I'm not here as a celebrity. I'm not here as a politician. I'm here as a mother. A mother who cares deeply about the world my children and all of our children live in. A world where we have the freedom to control our bodies. Texas, what is happening across this state and our country is a health care crisis. And Donald Trump is the architect of it. He brags about overturning Roe v. Wade. In his own words, quote, I did it and I'm proud to have done it. Joining us now is Mitch Landry, national co-chair for the Harris Walls campaign. Good morning, Lieutenant Governor. How you doing, my friend? Good, hey, you know, we got to keep. You just never know which one you're gonna get. You never know which one you're gonna we get. got a mutual yeah, love fest between us two well, Lieutenant we Governors. Together, tell you so it's all good. <laughs> hey, um, good morning. This, this uh, campaign, this Harris Walls campaign, is. Is, has done a phenomenal job in sort of setting up its closing argument, which we will see play out on the ellipse next week. Um, the event in Texas focused around, of course, um, the reproductive rights of women, but more broadly, the health care of women, setting up a, a companion argument that Donald Trump is an, a direct threat to that. Talk a little bit about how that how that message is resonating in a state like Texas. I mean, the fact that the campaigns in Texas, <laughs> I, I, brother, I, you know, uh, you it, gotta... <laughs> it, it, it is such a good move to make, to make the case. Well, thank you. First of all, it's great to see all of you, and thank you. Secondly, I don't, I don't want to skate over something that should be so obvious that we missed, but last night you saw Beyonce, I love me see Beyonce, was a, a, a woman of incredible power, who is at the top of her game in a field, standing next to Kamala Harris, another woman who is incredible and at the top of her field, talking to America about a new way forward. And as Beyonce said, it's time to write a new song. And I think that the frame of that is really critically important. And so as we move forward into next week and the vice president makes a closing argument, um, you think about three very basic things. Are we going to go forward or are we going to go backwards? Donald Trump is going to take us back. He doesn't want to go back to 1850. He wants to go back to 1798. And in Donald Trump's world, neither Beyonce nor, nor Vice President Harris would have the opportunity to show the world what their God-given gifts are. And that just is so patently obvious. Donald Trump is not fit for the presidency. All of the people that have worked with him have said so, and he is a threat to democracy, and we will use his power to hurt people, not help people. The second part of the argument is, and as proof of that, let me show you the freedoms that he has already taken away from you, one of which is women's uh, right to talk about their reproductive health and women's health, by the way. Remember, he tried to undo the Affordable Care Act. He tried to take away the need for people to be protected when they had pre-existing conditions. He did not make it easy for people to get to the hospital, and because you don't get early detection, you die. And then he went to the most fundamental right. Now he's trying to have both sides and act like he didn't, when we know what the truth is, that he is the reason why Roe versus Wade has gotten reversed. He put those three Supreme Court justices on the court. They went Went to Congress. They told them that they were going to uphold precedent, and they didn't. And then they reversed Roe versus Wade, and women have died all over the country. And Texas, as you know, is the belly of the beast. So Texas is the prime example of what states do when you give them the freedom to take away women's rights. And then the third argument is, if you give me power, says Kamala Harris, I'm going to use my power to help you. I'm going to create an economic opportunity for you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to put more money in your pocketbook. I'm going to make sure that you have lower cost in your life. And as a consequence of all of those things, the world is going to be a better place if you choose Kamala Harris and Mike Walls rather than Donald Trump. One's going to take us forward. One's going to take us back. Everybody knows what the score is. In America, we know what time it is. Lieutenant Governor, you referenced that sound from Beyonce talking about time for a new song. Let's let's play it for our audience. We must vote. And we need you. It's time to sing a new song. A song that began 248 years ago. The old notes of downfall, discord, despair no longer resonate. Our generations of loved ones before us are whispering a prophecy, 
a quest, a calling, an anthem. Our moment right now, it's time for America to sing a new song. Beyonce is not the only big name we heard from in Houston. We also heard from Colin Allred really drawing a distinction between he and his opponent, Ted Cruz. Take a listen to what Colin Allred had to say. I believe in a very different Texas than Ted Cruz does. My time in Congress, I've been the exact opposite of Ted Cruz. Because I never forgot where I came from. I never forgot the folks who gave me a chance. I've been the most bipartisan Texan in Congress because that's how you get things done. Lieutenant Governor, talk to me about the role you see these down-ballot races playing for the top of the ticket. Well, first of all, uh, um, as Colin said, and he's going to be great, and I think he's going to beat Ted Cruz in the belly of the beast in Texas, because he is talking about, as the vice president is in so many of us, the need to make a choice to go forward. The most incredible thing about the United States of America in democracy is that at these moments, the people of the United States of America have a choice to make. It is a critical choice, and the choice really matters. You can either go forward or you can go back. You can actually continue to be part of the American story of constant renewal constantly getting better. And we believe that you get better when you include more people. We believe that diversity is a strength and unity is our superpower. We believe in pluralism and everybody who's got a different way of life coming in, putting everything in the same gumbo pot, because y'all know I'm from Louisiana, <laughs> because it's better for everybody. That's not, that's not what they believe. Donald Trump believes that if you give him power, he said this, I alone can do it. Mm. There is no I alone and we the people. And that is a very important thing to learn from what his view of the world is. If you give him power, he's going to use it for himself. He's going to use it for his rich friends. And then, because you gave him power, you put a bat in his hands, he's going to hit you in the head with it if you don't agree with everything. That is not democracy as we know it. That, those are not the values and the virtues that created the America that have created the greatest nation in the world. Kamala Harris offers us a new way forward and, and, t and says to us, if you continue you to kind of honor the, the, the values that we've had since the beginning of our time, we actually have a wonderful future. If we go backwards, we know what that's been like. We know how dark that is. We know how painful it is. And we are not going back. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just a couple things, okay? You know, yes, the, the vice president was asked in a town hall earlier this week by Anderson Cooper on CNN if she thought Donald Trump was a fascist. This is after General John Kelly, who's the chief of staff for Donald Trump, the longest serving chief of staff in his administration, um, described to the New York Times the definition of fascist and then said that Donald Trump fits that definition. The vice president said yes. Just yesterday, McConnell and Speaker Johnson put out this joint statement uh, saying that she is fanning the flames and she's the one using the dangerous rhetoric. You couple that with Democrats who, from Axios to any other publication you can find, are concerned because the campaign is not doing what they're supposed to be doing and they feel like she's losing. What is the campaign's message or response, if you will, to um, Speaker Johnson and Mitch McConnell? And then I'm just wondering what you think about these Democrats who have a lot of thoughts but haven't been to a battleground state. Well, first of all, a couple things. Number one, we're going to win. We're going to win because we have a better vision for the future, and it's better for America. Number two, quit the hand-wringing. Uh, get out there and knock on doors, and instead of being worried, go out and vote. That would be the second thing. The third thing is this. Let's talk about fascism. Fa when, you, when, you, when somebody is, is, is determined to be a fascist, that's not just calling somebody a dirty word like you do on the street when you plant ball and you catch an elbow. That's, that's not what that is. A fascist is, 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 is a person who's got a view of the world that says that I am going to seize power from you. I'm going to use that power to hurt you. And I'm going to use that power to limit people's um, rights and responsibilities uh, and, and, the th and the opportunities that they have in their life. And the fascists in the world, Hitler, Stalin, are the guys that have caused the greatest amount of devastation and damage in the world. So when somebody um, it fits the definition of a fascist, the people of America should worry about that. It's the exact opposite of what democracy is supposed to be about. Now, Kamala Harris was not the first person to call Donald Trump a fascist. The people who called Donald Trump a fascist were the people that Donald Trump himself hired to run the government with him, his chief of staff, who, by the way, is the person who spends the most time with the president in the Oval Office, the person that Donald Trump hired, a guy who was a four-star general who lost his son in war 
and actually was able to observe him. The other guy who called him a fascist was the top military man in the United States of America, who Donald Trump also chose. The third person was the Secretary of Defense, who Donald Trump. Now, the top people in the country whose job it is to protect us are warning us. Now, I want the people of America to think about this. If you were hiring somebody to work with you, or you were trying to find a partner in your business, and you checked out their references, and their three best friends said, you know what, you might want to think about going in a different direction because I know things about that person that I, I, if I told you it would scare you to death, you might want to pay attention to that. The third point I want to make is this. Donald Trump himself has used more incendiary language out of his very mouth combined than anybody that's ever spoken and has called people Marxist, communist, fascist, and didn't have any evidence for that as, as, as at all. So the vice president was only responding to what other people had said, and she answered this question in a clear, direct, and forceful way. That is why she is going to be a good commander in chief. And as far as Mike Johnson and Mitch McConnell are concerned, they have they have really just kind of forgotten their way on this issue and neglected to stand up when they should have and use their power to save this country from the danger that Donald Trump is posing to us. And both of them know better and shame on them. Mm, yes. Well, I believe Mitch McConnell knows better. Mike Johnson, he's a true believer. Mitch Landers, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you all.